Today we'll look at how to set up and run a transient response dynamics analysis of a cantilevered beam. We'll begin by creating our simulation files and we'll create a new response dynamics solution 103 and we'll take the defaults. Next we'll go to the idealized part where we'll get an associative copy of the geometry so we can mid-surface it. Next we'll go to the FEM where we can create our mesh and we want to mesh the mid-surface geometry with shell elements. We'll select an element size and OK. Now we're going to inherit the thickness as well as the material properties from the mid-surface and the original CAD geometry. Next we'll create a point-to-edge spider of RBE2 elements and we'll use that point to define our user-defined constraints as well as enforced motion location. So here we'll constrain all degrees of freedom at the center point of our spider except for the Z direction, DOF3. And then we'll enforce motion in DOF3. All right, our model is set up for running our Solution 103. We'll go ahead and run that. And you can see that takes just about a second to run. And then we can look at our results. Our first mode is really the one that we're interested in here. And you can see it's just in simple bending. Next we'll create our response dynamics analysis. If you don't have that toolbar, you can turn it on by right clicking in the toolbar area. Then we'll create a new response dynamics referencing our modal solution. Here we can see the modes that we've recovered. Next we'll assign damping. and we'll set that to 2% for viscous damping. And there you can see that reflected in the response dynamics details view. Next we'll create a new event and this will be our transient dynamics event. We'll take the defaults and next we'd like to define an excitation. However, we don't have an excitation defined yet, so we'll use the function toolkit time ramp signal to define our excitation. So here we'll put in an amplitude of a half an inch, a width of 10 milliseconds, and a time period of one second. Now this function can't be used directly in our response dynamics as an excitation, it needs to first be synchronized because the function is uneven with its spacing. So we'll go to Tools, Math Operations for Functions, Basic Math, Synchronize in order to create an even function. So here we need to have the function selected, then we can add it, we'll need to select it again and then specify an increment and we'll use one millisecond for our increment and linear linear for our interpolation method and we'll append that to our original analysis function. Alright so that even function we can use as an excitation so let's go ahead and define our translational nodal excitation at our enforced motion location node and then we'll go to the function manager and pick up our synchronized function.
right, now we're ready to evaluate our function response, nodal, and we'll select a node out at the end of the beam, and we'll look at the response in the z direction. And we'll go ahead and create a plot. We can store that plot if we'd like to, to refer to it later. We'll give it a name and select OK. And here you can see the response at that node. It initially overshoots the half inch enforced motion that we've given it with that time ramp signal. And then you can see it ring down. And that's how to run a transient response dynamics analysis of a cantilevered beam.